Hi, I'm John Sabo. I'm with uh, Rogue Wave Software, and uh, I'm going to be uh, presenting on Apache Camel. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm apparently at the end of my presentation. Let me get back to the uh, right spot here. Here we go. Now we got it. Okay. Um, and making Apache Camel work for you. Uh, so I'm an enterprise architect with the OSS support team at Rogue Wave Software. Um, we uh, support a big uh, a variety of open source products. Um, I d personally do a lot of work with Apache ActiveMQ, uh, Apache Camel, uh, and then also work with Tomcat, uh, other uh, 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 web servers, that kind of thing. Um, anyways, uh, Camel uh, is an open source uh, message-oriented middleware language. Uh, it's developed by Apache. It's based on enterprise integration patterns. Uh, <clears throat> there's a book by uh, Gregor Hope and Bobby Wolf uh, called Enterprise Integration Patterns. It's a uh, wonderful book. It has uh, about 60 plus uh, common patterns uh, that you would commonly use enterprise integration projects. Uh, this includes things like, um, you know, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, blanking right now, but uh, it, lots of patterns, uh, distributing messages across different processors, uh, doing transformations, etc. We'll get into that later in the presentation. Uh, it defines these patterns in a vendor neutral way. These are things you'd want to do commonly uh, in any message oriented environment in the enterprise. Uh, Camel uh, aims to provide a language that implements these uh, patterns in a standardized way. Uh, you know they're implemented correctly. All that boilerplate is already there. Uh, it's very simple to use and uh, gets you up and running very quickly. And it's efficient at it too. Uh, it's modeled after the Unix pipeline. Uh, so everything has an input and an output. Uh, it's all based around messaging. Uh, Camel's a huge topic. There's a lot of inputs and outputs that you can use with it. Uh, a lot of different processors available. You can even code your own. Uh, so we're just going to scratch the surface here and uh, just barely kind of uh, do a demo, uh, talk about what it can do, and uh, kind of get you going uh, to where you can start investigating it yourself. Uh, how does it work? Uh, Camel uh, uses uh, this concept of processor and message objects um, in a group called an exchange. So how that works, uh, there's an in message, uh, there is a processor, and then an out message. The processor performs whatever transformations, filters, uh, whatever you want to do on that message uh, as it comes in, and then outputs it into an out message. Um, you know, same semantics. Uh, so you have a in message, processor, and an out message. Uh, because this is, you know, it's uh, consistent, uh, you can chain these together as much as you want. You can generate a, a, change of, a chain of processors here uh, to uh, you know, transform a message, uh, grab uh, content from uh, another source to add to that message, decorate it. Uh, you can then uh, you know, uh, distribute that message, uh, perform filtering on it, um, basically whatever you need to do to transform this. <clears throat> just like a Unix uh, pipeline. Uh, so you know, just like you'd pipe things through the Unix pipeline, you might you know, tee something out to a file, uh, et cetera. Camel does this to messages. Uh, and uh, for enterprise integration. Uh, the lab will actually be uh, a content-based router kind of based on this. Um, the out message from your previous exchange uh, becomes the in message for your next exchange. Uh, or you, you know, uh, uh, shoot it out to another a file, uh, a uh, HTTP endpoint, uh, JSON, you know, anything you want. Uh, it can go to another message bus. Uh, so these chain, chain together pretty consistently here. You have a pipeline. It's like Lego, Lego blocks. Um, the magical part here is that the processor can be anything uh, that you want it to be. Um, you can create your own processors uh, to do whatever you need to do in your business. Uh, if you have some s sort of custom processing you need to do, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can have, uh, there's an FTP processor uh, that can either uh, grab from uh, an FTP site 
uh, or you can uh, and initiate that session to pull something. Uh, you can al also output to FTP, uh, same way. Uh, SMTP, you can, you can grab you know, mail messages or you can send mail messages. These are all things you can do. Uh, so basically it's in, input from anything, output to anything else. Um, it can be triggered or it can be on a timer, uh, however you need to do this. Uh, it can be triggered by another message coming in, coming in uh, and then triggering it to, you know, pull, uh, triggering the processor to pull from uh, another source uh, or to combine it with another message. Um, there's a lot of built-in patterns. Uh, mentioned, you know, some of these here. Load balancing, you can, you can load balance uh, a certain type of message across any number of outputs. Uh, you can multicast, so you can brought, you know, brought, multicast out to uh, several different endpoints that you want to you want to send to. Um, you can create data sets with aggregation, um, and there's a ton of these components that are just built in. Like I said, uh, there's 60 plus integration patterns. There's probably 100 plus uh, components, and let me uh, let me actually look at and bring this up here just so you can see. Uh, this is this is the list on Camel's site of uh, all the components available, uh, just out of the box. Um, so we can we can look through here. Uh, you can uh, you know, Atom integration, uh, AWS, uh, Simple DB, email service. Um, you can do, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Cassandra, uh, <coughs> Couch DB. CXF uh, for web services. Uh, you can do, uh, losing my cursor here, um, Docker. Uh, can, you can communicate back and forth through your Docker instances. Uh, Dropbox, uh, Elasticsearch, etcd uh, for configuration. Uh, process spring events um, is Git hooks. Uh, let's see. What else is in here? Uh, you can do hip chat. You can do integration with chat uh, as well. So, you know, if you want to process, you know, if a message comes in, you want to uh, throw it onto your your chat client so that you can display it uh, in chat where it's relevant. Uh, you can do that for alerting or things like that based on certain messages. Uh, IMAP, IRC, uh, JBPM, uh, JMX. So you can you can monitor certain JMX uh, entities uh, using this. Uh, JDBC, so you can you can pull from and uh, uh, push into databases. Um, let's see, Kubernetes, uh, you can interact with that. Kafka, uh, so you can use Kafka message brokers. Uh, ActiveMQ is in there too. Um, I mean, you, so you get the idea. There's like inputs and outputs to everything. Uh, PDF, uh, Open OpenShift, uh, Pop, Quartz, RabbitMQ, REST. Anyways, way too much. Um, in any case, so there's a ton of components uh, that are built into Camel. Uh, this is a cropped picture. It doesn't actually, it stops at Scala here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so inputs and outputs from almost anything uh, out of the box. And you can always uh, code your own uh, if there's something that isn't in there already for some reason. <clears throat> so Camel's pretty awesome. Input and output transformation, uh, message transformation from any input and output. Uh, it provides a lot of benefits for uh, enterprise messaging applications. Um, there's a whole over 100 integration components uh, and a framework that's pretty easy to create your own components if uh, the out-of-the-box stuff doesn't do exactly what you want. Uh, it's very configurable, so you can do almost anything there. Uh, you can do, uh, Camel does have visual debugging now, similar to JPPM or BPEL. Uh, that's a newer feature, it wasn't there at the beginning. Um, Camel cuts down on boilerplate code because you can express uh, very concisely in its uh, spring-based integration components, um, you know, different transformations. So if you have simple transformations and processors and chains that you want to implement, there's a spring-based DSL uh, that is extremely compact for expressing uh, most of these uh, patterns that you'd want to implement. Uh, it is FOSS. It's under their Apache 2 license. Obviously, we're at ApacheCon, uh, so and it is an Apache product uh, project. Um, it uh, they continue to work on the underlying Spring libraries. So uh, you know, as Spring advances, uh, Camel's expressiveness uh, increases as well. Um, it's pretty easy to understand and has a low learning curve. 
uh, to implement. Um, I'll show a few uh, common EIPs, enterprise integration patterns, uh, that CAMEL includes out of the box here. Um, let's see. Go here. Um, so first one, dynamic router. Uh, you might want to route different messages to different endpoints based on uh, message criteria. Uh, so uh, safer, uh, this is actually what I'm, what I'm going to do the lab on. Uh, and uh, say you, you know, have two different types of messages coming in. Uh, one needs to be processed uh, by one, uh, one processor, another by another one. Uh, so you know, this example, you have a widget and widgets and gadgets, and you keep track of the inventory in those in two different systems. You have all your inventory coming into this from your order. Uh, this content-based router is splitting that, those orders up automatically into widgets and gadgets. Um, so pretty straightforward there. It's a common enterprise integration pattern. Uh, content enricher. Uh, so in this example, uh, you have a basic message. It's pretty bare bones, um, say, uh, you know, for that order uh, for the last one. Maybe it just has a part number and a quantity. But uh, before you display it to a user, uh, you need to uh, pull the, you know, what, where the image resource for it is and the name of it. Uh, so this enricher will pull that uh, inventory number, uh, ping a database to find out you know, what, uh, what the uh, long description of the item is, maybe some additional resources attached to that, attach it to that message. The message coming out of that uh, has been enriched with that extra, extra content at that point. Let's see. Um, recipient list. So recipient list, uh, broadcast um, message comes in, you broadcast it to end channels based on the message criteria. Um, if you broadcast it to all, this would be multicast. So that's the kind of uh, degenerate case here of broadcasting to all as multicast. Uh, but say you might want to select only certain endpoints or, or channels that the, this message gets routed to. Uh, so a recipient list will do that. Um, here's another really powerful one is scatter gather. Uh, so this one, Normally, this is something you'd end up with a lot of code to do. Uh, out of the box is pretty simple, though. Uh, you take in, say, a quote request. Um, you need to pull information from multiple vendors. Uh, this would be an example of like a, a travel booking website where you're comparing uh, the prices for a certain uh, flight route uh, from multiple vendors or hotel prices or something like that. So what you want to do is you want to take this one request of you know, this hotel the, this night, and I'm going to split out to you know, three different vendors uh, and get the pricing from those three vendors. I'm going to grab those quotes. I'm going to then take it in and put it into an aggregator that then does a max on those quotes that I'm getting back. And then from that, I get a best quote, and then that's what I end up presenting to the user. Um, and this is extremely simple to do with Camel. This is a few lines. Uh, you specify you know, message, what you want to filter out of it, uh, where you're uh, querying based on that filtered uh, data, uh, those quotes that come in, what you want to filter out of those, you aggregate, uh, you find the max, and then you have an output uh, of your end result here. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Coding in Camel. So, how do you do? How do you implement this? Uh, let's see. How are we doing on time here? Okay. Um, Camel routes. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can express Camel routes. It's fairly flexible based on how you want to work. Uh, they can be coded in Java POJOs. So, if you like working in code and that's how you uh, like to implement things, um, it's pretty simple to do this. Uh, this is an example of a camel route right here. It's extremely concise uh, and extremely powerful. What we're doing here is we're taking uh, messages from the foo queue on our ActiveMQ broker. Uh, we are consuming from that foo queue. We're applying a filter. Uh, with that filled in that filter, we're looking for an X query. Uh, so we're filtering on foo. So we're immediately, we're getting XML messages we're filtering them based on an X query, uh, based on the messages that match that. We are then forwarding those messages on that match that X query filter into a separate ActiveMQ uh, queue bar on our ActiveMQ instance. Um, this is, it's like a one-liner in Camel. 
Uh, if you're coding this manually, um, it'd probably be a little bit more involved and, and probably wouldn't be uh, as concise and, and understandable. Um, you can also uh, do this very simply and if you're prototyping and if you're just trying to play around with this and, and even in production, uh, this is a great way to do things because it's so easy. Uh, you can use the Spring DSL built into Camel uh, to implement these, uh, these different integration patterns and uh, message processing in straight up XML files, uh, just when configuration, and update these as you need to. Uh, so here is a, uh, another uh, example of a camel route. Uh, so we have our uh, camel route here, uh, spring, uh, we're calling it timer client. So what we're gonna do here is in you know, a couple lines here, uh, so we have the same structure, we have from, uh, our, you know, just like anything else in Camel, it's input, processor, output. So here's from, uh, we're instantiating in this one line here, uh, we're creating a timer. And this timer is going to repeat 10,000 times and it's gonna repeat once every 10 seconds. So in this one line, we are, uh, create, we're instantiating quartz, we're telling it every 10 seconds to trigger uh, every 10 seconds, we are triggering the production out of an active MQ message. Uh, we're calling this uh, act AMQ load timer, uh, and we're doing this 10,000 times in this one line. So we're generating load is basically what we're doing. Uh, from here, uh, the time, we're setting the body of these messages to uh, this is a test GMS message, so we're just basically generating a bunch of messages uh, to this active MQ queue. Uh, with the content, this is a test AMS message. Uh, we are then sending those messages to an output of our uh, ActiveMQ queue test ActiveMQ route in, in queue. Um, that's our ID there is timer client in queue producer. That can be useful when you're then looking at how this is acting. Uh, this is a great way uh, using a timer like this uh, when you're testing out routes. Uh, if you're even, if, even if you're not using Camel, if you have a messaging system and you need to generate some test load, uh, using a timer in Camel like this is an extremely way, easy way to do that. Uh, it takes one line, there's no compilation step. You stick this in, the, uh, in your Camel uh, route configuration and start it and there you have 10,000 messages going into your message queue uh, for test purposes. Uh, so it's, it's pretty simple there. Um, now uh, let's see, this Java Pojo up there, uh, all this is uh, implementing, you're uh, using the route builder class for that. Um, you cannot, the one drawback to the Java Pojos is you can't re render these routes graphically uh, in Hot.io, which uh, is extremely useful when you're debugging routes uh, and transformations uh, with this uh, Spring DSL. Uh, as you're mocking these things up, uh, you can actually see the, the messages propagate through your, your chain of uh, uh, transformations and uh, debug them that way. So it's a very useful tour, tool. Uh, once you get into production or want to you know, speed things up or do some more custom things, you can always do the POJOs as well. Let's see, and we'll have a demo on that as well. Um, let's see, uh, this, uh, yeah, so this is our, our example, Spring DSL Camel Route. I just talked through it back there. Um, we send 10,000 messages every 10 seconds uh, per message, and we're sending it into an active MQQ. Uh, in Hot IO, uh, when, we're, when we want to view this graphically, this is what it ends up looking like. Uh, we'll see a, uh, a box here for our from, uh, where our source is this timer uh, source, and uh, we're calling it AMQ load timer. Uh, the message contents is, this is a test JMS message, and then it shows us two, uh, and our uh, sync here is our ActiveMQQ test ActiveMQ route uh, in queue. And that counter up in the top there uh, as you can see, 1510, that's just the number of messages that have gone through uh, at this point uh, in the uh, GUI view. Um, let's see, the uh, developers on the, on the Camel project overlap a lot with ActiveMQ, so that's part of the reason why a lot of the demos uh, are using ActiveMQ. It's actually compatible with any uh, JMS provider though. Uh, ActiveMQ is just the one that they, they tend to use for demos. And as I 
showed you, you know, it's compatible with other message buses and things as well. Okay, message anatomy. So CAMEL is based around messages. Uh, it's very similar to the anatomy of a JMS message. Uh, that's that's kind of how it represents things internally. Uh, it's a normalized message router, so that's not very surprising. Uh, the normalized part is because uh, the exchange patterns all operate with the same structure. There's an in message, there's an out message, and a processor. The message part is the fact that the messages are the payload. So messages can be anything. Camel doesn't even have to understand the contents of a message as long as you're not, you know, the processors might understand the contents of a message, but fundamentally Camel doesn't care what's in the message. It's a payload. Uh, so doesn't matter, you know, if it's, it's something that, you know, Camel doesn't understand, you can still process it. Uh, and here's kind of what the message structure looks like. Uh, there's a message ID, there's headers, properties, payload, very similar to uh, JMS messages. <clears throat> uh, embedded processors. So Camel contains a bunch of embedded script languages. Uh, we saw the, um, you know, the Spring DSL, but it contains a number of embedded script languages uh, that you can use to create your own processors uh, without even having to go outside of Camel. Um, the simplest one, uh, ironically enough, is called Simple. Uh, it's a very simple query language. Uh, you can use it to introspect on message headers, payloads, properties. Uh, it's very useful for routing messages based on their content. Uh, it's uh, limited to looking up, uh, you know, contents of, of those uh, different message pieces. Uh, it can do some amount of filtering. Uh, it can do operations, but only single operations. It's not a full-fledged expression language. Uh, it is limited, uh, but it makes it extremely simple to read, uh, quick to implement if you're just trying to filter on something. Simple is great. Uh, a little bit more complex, XPath. Uh, so you saw in the Pojo Java example, there was a XPath query language option. Um, you can use XPath to traverse XML structures inside your messages if they're XML messages uh, as much as you want. So full featured XPath. Uh, you can filter based on anything you normally filter on an XPath, uh, make decisions based on an XPath query. JSON path, same thing, but for JSON structured messages. So if your messages contain JSON, uh, go, you know, have fun with that. Uh, they, you can filter based on that too. Uh, Groovy as well. So Groovy is also another scripting language available for Camel, and you can do pretty much anything you want with that because it's Groovy and it's fully featured, and you can do pretty much anything you need to with that. Uh, you can also use JavaScript. So if you want to run JavaScript inside of your Camel, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can write your own processors in JavaScript and not even have a compile step. Uh, and uh, you know, you're good to go. So I'm gonna do a quick demo here of a content-based router. Uh, we'll use the simple query language uh, to introspect a JMS header in a message and route it to a destination based on the contents of that header. Uh, we'll use Camel uh, deployed directly into ActiveMQ. ActiveMQ actually is bundled with uh, the Camel core distribution. Uh, it's already embedded in the ActiveMQ distribution that you uh, download. So we're gonna use a clean ActiveMQ install from scratch. And let's get that up here. So I'm going to extract my uh, clean ActiveMQ distribution here and then we will get to work on it. Okay, so this is, this is completely clean. Uh, ActiveMQ 5.14.5 this is the latest version. And if you look in the example configurations, there is a camel XML here. I'm going to copy that into the conf directory and that, then we have that already. Uh, let's see, let's get this up here. Um, and Okay, so here's our activemq.xml. 
Um, I'm going to just add in a uh, reference to camel. And so now we, we've included our camel config file here. Um, now I'm going to open up the camel config here. And since I've already done this, I'm going to just paste it in because I think we're running a little low on time. Um, here we go. OK, so what I'm going to do here is, let's see, I'm going to change the uh, broker URL. So the broker I'm connecting to, I'm going to connect to localhost. Um, and then over here, uh, there is a, an example route in here already. Uh, it just you know, sends messages that are in a, uh, QA on our uh, ActiveMQ instance uh, to QB. So instead, I'm going to do something a little fancier with a content-based router. And with well, this content-based router, I'm calling it CBRQ. It's content-based router. Uh, it is going to filter. There's a choice structure uh, in the Spring DSL for Camel. Uh, this choice structure uh, is kind of your if-then-else for Camel. You, can, you have when clauses. Um, I'm using the simple query language here uh, that we talked about. Uh, I'm filtering on my JMS type header, so the ty uh, JMS type uh, for the message, and I'm looking if, to see if it's type 1, type 2, or fall through and otherwise. Uh, then, depending on which type it is, I'm going to, I have, a t I have another two statement in here, and this two statement is either going to uh, send that message along to type 1 queue, type 2 queue, or exception queue. So let's go ahead and save this here, and then I will start up ActiveMQ. And let's see here. So if you look here, this is a plain vanilla ActiveMQ installation. I've done nothing to it other than editing those two files. Um, and of course, my syntax is off. So I will fix that here. That's what happens when you paste in looking over your shoulder. Let's see. So let's try that again. <clears throat> so we're waiting here for ActiveMQ to start up. Uh, Camel, uh, if you recall, is actually the core is, is built into the ActiveMQ distribution. So I didn't have to add anything else to this. Uh, it already has this. Just had to make a Camel config file. Okay, so starting up, and then if I look over here, let's see, wait for it to start up, almost started. Delokia, okay, getting there. Takes a little while to start up. And as soon as this starts up here, okay, now we have our ActiveMQ console. So what we can see here, uh, this is just the default ActiveMQ console. It's running on port 8161 on my machine. Uh, can open up uh, my ActiveMQ broker. Um, I see because Camel's here and uh, I've set up those queues, it already has a CBR queue. So as you can see, there's nothing in it right now. There are a couple consumers. Those were based on those, uh, those two processors that I, I uh, implemented there in the when clause. So there's not, no messages in here right now. If I want to, I can send a message. I'm going to make my message uh, type 1 here, and I'm going to send it into my CVR queue. OK, so went through. Now if I refresh here, I now have a type 1 queue. And inside that queue, I have my message. Uh, so Camel just routed that message for me. And let's see here, and that. And actually, I can see it in the console as well. So I sent that message in, uh, and uh, it, let's see. 
Oh, I don't have debugging on. But uh, yeah. So anyways, you can see that uh, if I go into queues and I send here, I can do a type two message. That'll end up in my type two queue. If I have a message of some random type, that ends up in my exception queue. Uh, so that's, that's pretty straightforward there. Let's see. How am I doing on time here? Should be good. OK. <clears throat> uh, let's go back to the slide deck here. OK, camel deployment. Uh, Camel can be de deployed in a bunch of different ways. Um, it can be deployed as part of a Java web app using Spring or Pojo. Uh, standalone Camel routes can be deployed using Maven in Camel. Uh, so you can, you can deploy with Maven. Uh, Spring Boot uh, can launch Camel routes. Uh, it can be embedded in other Java applications. Uh, it can be embedded within Jetty, Tomcat, JBoss, Wildfly, whatever you want. Um, ActiveMQ contains the core, Camel core libraries, like I mentioned, so you can launch and deploy Camel routes right out of the, the uh, right out of the standard ActiveMQ distribution. Um, OSDI containers like Carafe uh, or ServiceMex, which includes ActiveMQ, Camel, and CXF, uh, can also launch Camel routes. Um, major IDEs like Eclipse and Out IntelliJ. Uh, actually can allow you to ex execute the routes within the IDE. Um, there are comprehensive inline tools as of Camel, Camel uh, 2.16 uh, that you can auto-complete, uh, list any parameter available on these different, uh, different components. So you know, here's an example of the file component. Uh, here's auto-complete, you know, how often you want to check that file location, uh, what time unit, uh, if you're logging level, scheduler, et cetera. Um, Let's see, Hot.io is probably the easiest and, and quickest way to prototype with Camel, though. Uh, it lets you do visual debugging of routes. I kind of showed you an example of that earlier, uh, tracing the message lifecycle, and lets you diagram your development, uh, as well as monitoring. So when you have an active system running Camel, uh, you can run Hot.io and see any of these routes we've created using the Spring DSL. Uh, this is a, a, an example here. So uh, let's see. Let's see here, yeah, so I will do a quick demo of that. Get this up and running. <coughs> there we go. So I'm gonna uh, run a new terminal here. I already have hot IO in here. So I'm just gonna run it java.jar, uh, let's see. Headed in here, let's check. Yeah. Why is that not, oh. There we go. So I'm starting up hot IO now. And this takes a little while, and as soon as it starts, it's going to auto-launch a, uh, a web console here. Let's see. So Hot.io is great. Um, I'm not, if you haven't used it before, uh, it uh, lets you introspect on JMX. Uh, you can view your ActiveMQ uh, instances and queues. Uh, and Wonderfully, it uh, lets you uh, view your camel routes graphically. And as soon as it comes up here, okay, here we go. So, still kind of coming up here, but. Da, da, da. It's a little bit slow. <coughs> a 
Okay, so here's uh, hot I/O. So as you can see in here, this is our local uh, ActiveMQ instance. Um, it has all of our queues that are in the instance right here. Uh, this is great for if you ever are running uh, ActiveMQ, you can debug uh, what's going on. Uh, you can see, you know, it's much nicer uh, looking than the uh, ActiveMQ uh, web, built-in web console. Uh, it's a little fancier and stuff. See diagrams here of, of what all is going on with your actual MQ queues. Uh, but what you can do in here is if you go to the camel tab over here, uh, it has a diagram of the route we just made in our XML. Uh, so what we can see here is uh, you know, we have our CBR queue input. We have a choice statement here. Uh, it tells us that uh, three messages have already gone through and you can, I can even see the message statistics of how long they took to process, uh, about seven milliseconds here. Um, and then the three different outputs here where, you know, we have choice uh, or when clauses based on uh, these three different fil uh, simple uh, filters. Uh, we're looking for type one, type two, or our otherwise fall through. Uh, and uh, we can see here, we had three messages go through the choice block and one ended up in each of the, the two, two uh, blocks here. Now, what's really neat here is I can debug this. So I can go right here, and where's the debug here? Where'd it go? Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, so start debugging. I'm gonna add a breakpoint on my choice block here. So you see a little dot shows up there, I have a breakpoint. Um, let me send another message into my queue here. Uh, another uh, type one message. And obviously this would work for much more complex uh, uh, chains as well. So sent one in. Uh, now my debugger has stopped on my breakpoint. And I now see that this message, uh, and its name is kind of funny because I haven't really been doing anything uh, nice with the names like I do in a real application. Uh, it has the message I just sent. Now if I want, I can step into it. So now I'm at the choice. Uh, and then actually there's only one step here, so ends up in two. So it just showed me that that message ended up in my, uh, my first two clause uh, filtered on type one. If I do another message here, uh, it will do the same thing. Um, let's say type of something else. So it should end up in the exception queue. And right here, let's see, start, and okay, so here's my next message. So I've gotten four messages through this choice block here. Um, I can view the message down here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let it go through. And now I have two messages down here. Uh, so I can, I'm gonna disable this breakpoint now. And so we're done debugging. Now, uh, what's really cool here, additionally, is there's also this uh, trace function. Um, I lost my cursor here. And it's not showing here because the monitor's a little too small, but I have trace right here. Uh, so I can start tracing, and what I can do, I can just send anything into here. And let's do type two here. Now, so I did that. Now the trace function here should show me the trace. Uh, looks like I'm having some issues based on the uh, screen size here. Um, what that should be doing here Yeah, for some reason it's not working with the uh, screen size. It wants a larger screen size. Normally what you'd be seeing here is a really cool trace uh, of the messages in flight on each step of this route. Uh, so you'd see it come in uh, to the CBR queue. You'd see the choice block. Uh, you'd see uh, it hit the filter for uh, type two, and then you'd see it end up uh, in the, uh, the type two queue. but it's not liking the screen size right now, so it's not showing that. <clears throat> uh, 
Let's see, uh, to continue on here, because I think we, we're running low on time. Uh, camel monitoring, uh, camel has a bunch of JMX instrumentation, instrumentation beans uh, that can be looked at to gain more information on the route. Uh, as you could see in hot IO, uh, it tracks things like latency, maximum time, minimum time, average time on how, uh, how your routes are doing. Uh, any JMX capable enterprise monitoring solution uh, is a good fit for monitoring this. So if you're implementing your uh, uh, routes uh, in Camel, you can monitor what your load is like. Um, you know, here's, here's an example, uh, just looking uh, with uh, JVisual VM, uh, looking into the uh, different, you know, statistics available for each route. Um, and actually, I, I jumped the gun here. I, I went and did that hot IO and Camel demo there. I uh, showed you uh, uh, setting breakpoints, uh, inspecting the message at that breakpoint, and the uh, trace function, uh, which I guess you need a slightly larger uh, resolution monitor to uh, view that effectively. Um, in conclusion, uh, this is just like scraping the surface of Camel. We only used one processor and uh, uh, one uh, message source, uh, you know, we're only using ActiveMQ here. Uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, powerful aggregation strategies that you can use to combine uh, large multi-threaded uh, multi-process data sets together. Uh, this is, you know, Camel running on one instance. If you had a truly large uh, uh, environment that you're trying to do this in, uh, process large numbers of messages at volume, you might have more than one Camel instance running across your servers. You know, this is just kind of debugging here. Uh, you might have a multi-server multi farm of uh, message queue servers, uh, you know, that messages are being ingested into with a farm of, you know, uh, Camel servers on your input and then more Camel servers on your output, uh, depending. But, you know, to get started, you can run uh, just ActiveMQ with this embedded Camel instance. Um, it has all sorts of capabilities for message transformation uh, using SXLT, uh, Velocity Free Marker, uh, more advanced uh, format conversion libraries like POI or PDF box. Um, you know, this is all kind of out of the box for Camel, uh, and you can make your own as well. And best thing is just start playing with it. Uh, it's really easy to play with. Uh, you saw the XML, uh, the Spring DSL. And uh, yeah, it, it takes literally two minutes to get, get going with it. You just download ActiveMQ, uh, start playing with it. Download Hotio separately uh, if you want to see things visually. Uh, the Camel community is pretty active and friendly. Uh, they have an IRC channel on Freenode and of course the community page. And that's Camel. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything about Camel, ActiveMQ, anything else? Yes. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different just in terms of it, um, I haven't used Spring integration as much, but uh, it's, it's meant to be a kind of a self-contained integration pattern library. So you can do in, input and output from anything. It's supposed to be infinitely flexible. You could use along with that, I'm sure. Um, do you have a spe specific use case you're looking for? Basically, I have experience with Spring integration. Okay. Yes, and actually, I think I think I'd have to look. I don't remember if Spring Integration actually does anything with Camel, um, but I don't remember. Uh, it's been a while since I've touched it. In our experience with Spring Integration, the main thing is you you save a lot of time coding because you you only work on POJOs like Camel. You don't write. Well, you can you can write POJOs with Camel. Yeah. So, because there is too much configuration stuff, like mm -hmm. uh, you, you are integrating with JMS, uh, integrating with JMX, right? And you need yes. to tune those properties. Mm -hmm. So, the effort we saved in coding was basically um, went into configuring the components and optimizing the tune because then every component is working, their bottlenecks will develop when you work on load. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, so the, the, the nice thing about Camel, and it's kind of like the, you know, actually cure things, as you gain more load, you, you add more servers. You expand horizontally. Um, it, since everything is messages, it should be fairly easy to do that. Uh, that's why you have Camel routes that allow you to do things like load balance and things like that. Yeah, but with profiling, uh, 
filing uh, was missing in the indication, right? Um, we, yeah. It took a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. so uh, my question is, uh, is this hot IO providing uh, just kind of debug kind of tool or is it also used to get uh, metrics, useful metrics out of load test? So what Hot.io is actually doing is it's just looking at the uh, JMX parameters available to Camel. So Cam Camel keeps track of uh, your message um, processing time, in-flight time, your averages, your maxes, uh, all of that. Hot.io provides a very nice interface to view that graphically. Uh, whereas, you know, oftentimes if you had that, you know, you might have a framework that has a bunch of JMX available to it, but, you know, it, it's relatively opaque. I mean, yes, you can go and view it, but it's not going to show all this stuff, you know, hey, what's, what's my route doing? And then, you know, just see, you know, be able to trace through. You actually have to start looking through all the names and all that. Hot.io presents it graphically, uh, so it, it's very nice for being able to drill down your routes and uh, your processing chains and see where your bottlenecks are, uh, and then you can optimize it better. Uh, as you kind of saw as I was, uh, let me bring up uh, Hot.io again here, and uh, yeah, so if you saw on this, like when I'm just moused over here, it's telling me what my, my mean, min, max, and last uh, processing time was. Now, the max and, and mean here and stuff is, is crazy high because I was tracing it. <laughs> so I, I was doing some interesting stuff here. But uh, it's very easy, and you can connect this to any system. It's pretty simple. You, won't, you don't want to run trace on production. Uh, but if you just want to start looking into your routes and your statistics and say, like, hey, at this point of the route, you know, my processing time is this, it's looking like this, you know, I can start looking at that very quickly uh, to drill down. You know, you mentioned performance concerns and when, how am I going to scale. Um, so this graphically is a very simple way to do that. Once you get uh, more established in what processing you're doing, obviously you'd probably end up integrating that into your own JMX monitoring solutions, monitoring the routes that you normally run. Uh, but you know, as you're prototyping and trying to determine your load, uh, this is very useful. So, any other questions? Let's see, I think we're good. Yeah.